I just remember being so pleased when Marjorie joined Newsroom. She brought so much elegance to the program. She was a great beauty. And she covered an important beat, medicine and other things as well. But whenever you had a really important story, like the Roe versus Wade decision from the Supreme Court, very important in 1973, nobody could do it better or more reliably than Marjorie Lewis. When I got here, Marjorie was already here. So Marjorie was one of the first uh, females, one of the first African-Americans on a nightly television show that did the news. And uh, so, but we were instant, you know, buddies because our whole group, I mean, we were like family. When we sat down in the evening at that news room table, it was like sitting down for dinner almost uh, in the family dining room. And, and, we, and we acted like we were brothers and sisters almost, not just journalists, not just colleagues. We were family. She was uh, prepared. She knew the facts, she was thorough, and she also had clarity. So whenever she spoke, everybody listened. And even with her, you know, really soft voice, there was a tone about with that voice that said, this is important. What I'm telling you is something you need to know. So listen. Yeah, she, she commanded your attention. We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. So stated the United States Supreme Court May 17, 1954, in the historic case Brown versus the Board of Education. Ironically, knowledge of Brown eludes those whom it affects most. When did this all happen? I thought it was just recent. The history courses here usually don't get past World War II. All I said was that I, I'd like to know who Brown was. I already knew about the Board of Education. I think that it's about some girl that tried to get, go to another school or something. The Brown decision was a result of Reverend Oliver Brown's futile attempt to enroll his seven-year-old daughter, Linda, in the all-white school near their home in Topeka, Kansas. In Dallas, the first desegregation suit was filed in 1955. This same suit has continued through today. Only the names of the litigants have changed. Marjorie had her, her, had her life. I mean, as I recall, she had two young kids at the time. Uh, she was this mother, you know, who was very interested in making sure that her kids were taken care of. I think she was married to a doctor at the time. And, you know, they had their, their life. But when it came down to telling the story of the people, and that's what we tried to do at Newsroom, was that we were going to be the voice for the people who didn't have voices and speak to the people who had the authority. And she was part of that, that whole situation that, where she could come in and make it happen. I guess I would add that she was an unselfconscious person. Yeah, oh, so, yes. So I mean, her, her focus was out there. Yes. What's going on? Yes. And again, once, once you heard her story, you had the information that you needed. And, you know, in those days we had feedback. And, and, and unless you asked her a question after the story or a feedback question came in, her story was the story. She had done it. There was, there was nothing else to say about it, really, unless there was something that somebody thought of later that we had to go back and investigate or look into. She presented it, hey, this is it. And, right. and she'd sit back and listen and didn't say that much more That's right. Uh, about it. I mean, it's just, uh, just an amazing individual.